Hi, and welcome to my video blog. I'm Dr. Jeff Kalaszewski. In today's vlog, I'm going to respond to and talk about a question I get emailed a lot. The question is, is how does one become a forensic psychologist? People often follow it up with other questions like, do I need to get a double major in psychology and criminal justice? Do I need to have a PhD in forensic psychology in order to work as a forensic psychologist? Well, here's what you need to know. The first thing and the most important thing is, in order to work as a forensic psychologist, you have to obtain a professional license to practice psychology. This license, allow, uh, license allows you to see patients. Now, usually um, to obtain a full or unrestricted license to practice psychology, you need to earn a doctorate, either a PhD or a PsyD, in clinical psychology or counseling psychology. And it's very helpful if you earn that doctorate from a program that's accredited by the American Psychological Association. Now, a doctorate in clinical or counseling psychology will usually take you four or five years after your bachelor's. And also, as part of obtaining that doctorate, you uh, have to do a one-year internship. After you do your internship, and after you finish your dissertation, then in most states, you typically need to practice one or two years under the supervision of a fully licensed or an unrestricted licensed psychologist before you can practice independently. During that time, you also have to take a national licensing exam. The second thing you need to know about what you need to do in order to work as a forensic psychologist is that most forensic psychologists go on for specialized or advanced training. So when you finish your doctorate in clinical or counseling psychology, you're basically trained as a generalist psychologist. So you know how to do counseling and psychotherapy, you know how to do assessment, you know how to do psychological testing. But most forensic psychologists do advanced training on top of their generalist psychologist training. There's three ways that people typically do this. The first way, is the way that I did it actually, was that um, I was able to obtain an internship at the Federal Bureau of Prisons Medical Center in Lexington, Kentucky where I went through their forensic psychology training program. Another way that a lot of practicing forensic psychologists get that level of advanced training is they do what's, what's known as a, a postdoctoral fellowship. And a lot of times that's an extra year after internship where they go to a site that specializes in forensic psychology and they have a training program. There is a third way. There are um, a fair amount of people who work as forensic psychologists that are trained as generalist psychologists and then on their own they go out and obtain um, advanced training in forensic psychology. They take seminars, um, they might get supervised training and work experience in a forensic setting. A little caveat, in 23 states in the United States you can get uh, licensed as a master's level psychologist. Now those licenses typically you have to work under the supervision of a fully licensed or unrestricted licensed psychologist. Now, I have met some people who work as forensic psychologists that have a master's degree, um, and some are very good. But to be honest with you, it's v very much more difficult to get established as a forensic psychologist uh, with just a master's degree. In fact, uh, I've been in some cases where the court would not allow the the person with a master's level psychology license uh, to be considered an expert in the court. So there are folks of master's degree who are working as forensic psychologists, but it's a difficult path. A couple of other important points. Now there's not any state that I'm aware of that has what's called a licensed forensic psychologist. Most practicing forensic psychologists are were trained as generalist psychologists and have advanced or specialized training. Now there are a, a few states where there are certain certifications in the law that you may need in order to practice certain types of forensic psychology. So for example, in California, in order to be recognized in the court, you have to go through and get a special type of certification that shows that you're competent in order to practice in family law. That's the main one in California. Be wary of graduate programs in forensic psychology. Now I get three or four emails a year from people who say they went on and got a master's degree in forensic psychology and now they can't find a job in forensic psychology. Well, the reason is, is because they don't have a license to practice psychology. So be wary of those programs, particularly online programs. 
I hope this helps. Uh, if you want more information in regards to forensic psychology in general or the work of a forensic psychologist, check out the videos on my YouTube channel. And, and particularly check out the ones that are in my playlist. Now I'm going to do a, a, a new vlog on forensic psychology every Tuesday. The vlogs will cover a, a, a variety of topics in forensic psychology. Sometimes I'll be discussing forensic psychology um, around the context of current events or, or media stories. Um, I also am going to provide this vlog as a way to respond to questions that subscribers email to me. My email should be on the bottom of the screen. So if forensic psychology is, is an area that interests you, or if it's an area that interests you as a career, um, please, uh, subscribe, or please subscribe to this channel. Uh, also, you can follow me on Facebook at Dr. Jeff Kalaszewski, Forensic Psychologist. And also, please pass this link along to others. See you next week.